October 2017. Uh, it's been a little over two years since I shot my initial coot video, and I thought I'd um, uh, talk about some of the modification amendments that I've made to the coot that have uh, that I've noticed the past two years made my life a little bit easier. That I thought I'd pass along to you guys. So the first thing is storage. Um, initially, what I was doing was I had all my storage down in my my garage, which isn't too far away, uh, but it was a little bit of pain uh, bringing stuff back and forth from the coop. So I started adding storage to this coop area to make my life a little bit easier. First thing here is a storage area for all my straw. So this is your typical uh, deck box that I purchased. Um, and what I have inside is basically a large, this is a wood pellet bag that you'll get when you buy a pallet of wood pellets. They put this bag around there. And I use this to basically put my straw in. This is a bale of straw um, that you can get at any kind of uh, food store, uh, which I use inside my coop. Incidentally, this bag is really, really good for transporting the straw. If you've ever transported straw in the back of your car, you realize that it gets everywhere. So basically, you just take this bag, stick it in the back of your car, plop your bale in there, and then you basically protect your car from uh, all the straw that gets everywhere. So this has worked out really well. Inside the coop, I have another storage container. This is a Craftsman six foot by two foot storage container that I basically put all my tools that I use for cleaning up my coop. Um, inside here, I'll have my chair and uh, different types of shovels and rakes. Uh, that's my, uh, my dry, um, dry vac that I use for cleaning my soil. And I'll have elect electrical extension cords, disinfectants, and other tools in here. This has helped out a lot in terms of keeping everything right where I need it. Another thing I added was lights. So when the days get short, uh, a lot of times when you're coming out to your coop in the morning or when you're coming back from work, it's pretty, pretty dark outside and it's hard to see around the coop. Uh, so these are solar power lights. You see I have one in the back of the coop here that helps me see what I'm doing uh, when I'm pulling things out the back of my coop in terms of changing out the straw or grabbing the eggs. I got another one here that's by the door. And then I've got one inside here. Um, this is a 20 LED basically floodlight um, that has a motion detector on it. I don't really use the motion detector because the fact is that the ducks always turn it on and off with them moving around all the time so it doesn't make a lot of sense. So there's a little on and off switch back here that I'll just click on um, as soon as I come in and I'll click off and I leave and it's attached to uh, a uh, solar panel that's right there that provides all the electricity that I need uh, to light this uh, LED solar powered light up. Inside the coop, I'm still using sand. Um, when I initially uh, um, built the coop about two years ago, I used about four yards of sand inside the, the coop, and it's, it's been working pretty well. Um, I went through various different design stages in terms of how I was going to clean it, and I settled on uh, this station here. Um, it's basically a, a double steel container station. Here I'm cleaning some sand. Uh, you can see it percolating in there, that's because I've hit it with some um, uh, citric acid and some sodium nitrate, or excuse me, sodium chloride that helps disinfect the soil um, before I put it back into the coop. Uh, while I'm cleaning the soil, I'll use this hose to bring up the water and then I'll suck the water out and put it into this jug that's back here, um, which will fill up with the, basically the mucky manure water, uh, which I'll grab uh, with a five gallon container and then I'll take it out to all my different uh, fruit trees that are around the back of my garden. So this is how it worked out really, really well in terms of uh, cleaning the sand and also being able to harvest all the great manure that comes off of it. Uh, I've got a video on that if you're interested in it. Uh, but this is, uh, this is the technique that I'm using right now um, that has proven to be effective in terms of being able to clean a lot of sand at once without actually breaking your back doing it. So in terms of the food and the water systems, um, in terms of the food system, I'm still basically using the same thing I used two years ago, which is this jug. I've got these four inch elbows. 
um, that uh, I've drilled holes into and then I basically just put them in there. Um, I need some soil, or excuse me, some more food in here, but you can see what it looks like down here. Basically, you can see the top of the, um, the elbows and I put some bricks in here at the bottom. Um, so basically when I fill up the pellets, you know, the, the pellets only come, this is basically just the brick right here. So I don't lose a lot of pellets underneath the elbows. And then I'll just fill this whole thing up with a bag of, of feed. And occasionally what I'll have to do is brush the pellets into um, the, uh, the elbows. But this is pretty much a, an automated, automatic uh, food station. It's, been, it's worked very well since I built it. And I really haven't changed it that much at all. In terms of the water system, I have changed this. Uh, initially, I was using five-gallon buckets, um, which proved quite messy. The ducks would stick their heads in there and shoot the water everywhere. Uh, this is an automatic watering station that I've shot a video for if you're interested in. Um, but basically, it has uh, three areas for three different ducks or more to uh, drink out of and also to clean their nostrils and their, their, uh, their eyes with. Um, it has a hose that goes into the back of it. There's a float inside this jug uh, that causes the water to turn off and on depending upon the level that I set it at. It also has a chute here in the back that allows me to easily empty the water by basically just uh, turning it like this and you can see the water comes out. So that's how I'll change out the water, um, make sure that it stays nice and clean. And you can hear it inside there. Um, starting to fill up. Occasionally what will happen is I'll have some sand in there because ducks like to fill up their mouths with grit and food before they stick their, their mouth inside a water source. So I'll have to kind of just scoop out the sand a little bit, but this has been working really, really well. In the winter, um, I'm still using my insulated pails, which I've been using for the last two seasons, which I also shot a video on, which has worked out really well. Um, but these are the two systems that I'm using basically for feed and watering. You want your water and your food source to be somewhat near each other. Um, so that's what I've been using and they've been working out pretty well. In terms of shelter, not much has changed. Uh, I'm still using the same setup, which is I have uh, two doors in the back and one door in the front. Uh, this allows me to uh, gain access from the back once the ducks go into the yard without going to the yard to bother them um, where I can get my eggs out and I clean out my straw very effective uh, one of the things I have added to this system is electricity here you can see an electrical cord going all the way to the back and this is hooked up to a poultry light uh, that is inside here um, this light is on 15 hours a day I have it on right now just to shoot a video for you guys uh, but that allows uh, me, not, excuse me, it's not all 15 hours a day. What it allows me to have is 15 hours of continuous light in the coop um, so that the ducks basically don't lose light as the season goes by so they keep up their egg production. Other than that, there really hasn't been that much change to the shelter area. Uh, I will say one of the things that I've noticed um, um, is that because the material that I use, which is this kind of laminate, uh, not laminate, but this is a kind of fiberboard material. It's about, I'd say, a half inch thick. But over time, what you can see is that it warped. Okay, so um, that is basically a process of of this getting wet um, and drying over a continual course of time, and it causing it to warp a little bit. You know, if I actually took a piece of wood and frame this. Tap, uh, tack some wood onto this, I probably would straighten that out. But that's just something to kind of keep in mind in terms of the material that you're going to build your coop with. Um, I've had some warpage, obviously, with the doors. Uh, but this has been working really, really well. Um, uh, the whole system has not really changed at all since the day that I built it. I'm in the process of changing out my ducks with uh, new ducklings. Uh, the ducks you see right there, those are approximately three month old ducks. Um, and uh, I'm gonna be changing them out uh, for the adult ducks. I, I, I took a, an old um, 
nesting box that I had in the coop, which the ducks were using basically to just kind of get some shelter when it was windy or they would just sit in there uh, to get some shade or whatever. Uh, converted it to a nursery. Um, it's got four different doors on it, three doors on the top, one door on the bottom. Uh, it allows me to basically fill this up with different types of, uh, excuse me, fill this up with straw. And then inside here, I also have um, basically a, a baby watering container here uh, that is very similar, as you can see, to the watering container over there. So it's basically a kind of a, a training device for the ducklings to get used to sticking their heads in the holes and drinking out of. Uh, so that's been pretty effective in terms of creating a nursery inside the duck yard um, so that I can actually have two different flocks going on at once. So another thing that I added was, this is a cell phone um, holding station where I can just basically stick my cell phone inside here. This has a three and a half millimeter cord that goes to a booster pack up here. This is a booster pack um, that has a bat is battery operated that will basically amplify the sound. To that is connected speaker wire uh, that goes to one speaker over there and to another speaker in there. And all I have to do is basically stick my cell phone in here hook this into the headphone and then play some tunes. So this has been helpful in terms of getting a little music in the coop while I'm doing some work. Um, and uh, doesn't require any electricity at all. So um, I have enjoyed this as well. That's pretty much it. Um, there hasn't been that many differences. Um, I've added a couple things in terms of storage, uh, lighting, um, and uh, solutions for cleaning my sand and, and uh, watering the ducks. Um, got any questions? Please ask. Thanks for watching.